Penguin, issue five. Tom King writing with Raphael De La Torre on the R. Mm -hmm. So, Penguin's been recruiting people for his, uh, you know, takeover of Gotham, and mm -hmm. this seems to be the final issue of that happening. This is because the issue ends with him saying, "We're ready for Gotham, but is Gotham ready for us?" Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems like we're at that point now. But yeah, we have one final recruitment issue, and it very much focuses on this character, Black Spider. Mm -hmm. Um, and the book, we don't even see Penguin until the very final page. We hear his voice, uh, you know, quote and unquote. From from a first person, which I did like too. It's yeah. like when they're talking to, when he's talking to, to the person across the table, you know, we get his speech bubbles, but there, there's no arrows to him, which I think is a nice touch too. Yeah. You know? It almost feels omnipotent. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. He is omnipotent. And that's yeah. kind of the vibe that you get with the penguin. He feels like a, a higher power, if you will. So, yeah, it's basically this character, uh, Black Spider, who's not a new character, I've heard of him, but he's, mm -hmm. I, you know, I couldn't tell you much about him. Uh, but he's effectively, as we get to the end, we realize what this all is. He's telling Penguin the story as to why he's motivated to be on Penguin's side. Um, mm -hmm. So he, he, you know, he talks about his time in Gotham, he talks about how he was hired by Penguin's kids, the, the Sibs, as he calls them, the siblings, you know, Sibs. Mm -hmm. Good. It's it's a good name to refer to them as, yeah. you know. Um, and he, you know, he'd go after uh, this, you know, meth lab or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or maybe a cocaine lab, yep. and he kills everyone there. This apparently is a. I I think he mentions what villain owns this place, but it's not. It's not Was Rid it? It's not Riddler. I think it's Falcone. Yeah, because yeah. two of the guys are dressed in Riddler outfits, mm -hmm. but they're just Riddler goons who have been hired for this job. They're not actually yep. working for Riddler right now, which is a, an interesting mm -hmm. little detail that I quite liked, actually. But it, basically, he goes in and kills everyone. He was meant to leave one person alive, right? That was the, mm -hmm. the thing he says. He's I meant to leave one person alive to spread the, the, the fear and spread who did this and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he gets annoyed at the guy that he's trying to tell the, the, the message to and just kills him instead. Um, and he's like, I'll leave a note. But it turns out that the siblings don't like this very much. And they, you know, they, they badmouth them. And what's so interesting is they're berating him and saying that they're only going to pay him half of what he was going to get paid. Mm -hmm. But his narration the entire time, or his, like, you know, storytelling to, to Penguin, is how much in his head he was thinking about killing them and like how he would do it and how easy it would be but he doesn't and we find out over the next few parts of the story that he wasn't being paid with money he was being paid with venom as in you know bane venom yep not for himself right he does talk about how he used to be an addict and he's not anymore yep. and he hates addicts and that's why he likes killing people at drug labs but yep. he's getting it because his boyfriend is sick and the venom actually makes him feel okay, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever he's got um, goes away when he's as long as he's getting regular doses mm -hmm. of venom. So he's doing this for someone he cares about, and that's what keeps him in line. That's what's stopping him from just losing his shit and killing the siblings. Is he needs this source of venom, and they're driving up the price. They want him to do another job to earn more venom. So he, you know, he takes that job, um, and. Of course, he accidentally kills one guy again. Like you know, he, we we don't see the whole job this time. We just see the tail yeah. end of it, and he shoots the guy, and he falls in the water, and he's like, "Shit, God damn it!" Yeah. And then out of nowhere is a full page spread of Batman standing behind him, which did yep. make me pop. I thought that was a really nice reveal, mm -hmm. mainly because Batman was never mentioned the whole issue. Mm -hmm. But we know he's in Gotham, so it makes sense that at some point he may attract the attention of Batman. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, he gets away from Batman by jumping in the filthy Gotham River <laughs> because yeah. no one can see underneath. If he used to as a kid. I did like that, too. He's like, we used to go to see how far we could go. And just like, oh, man, Gotham kids are different. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he talks about stinking, how half of his friends mm -hmm. died of cancer. And, yep. like, he doesn't know that came from the river, but he thinks it does. No. <laughs> yeah. He says he pukes up a gallon of water or what's supposed to be water. And you're just like, ugh. But yeah. he goes home to to his boyfriend after like laying low for a bit so as not to attract Batman. 
and finds just two penguin toys in his bed instead of his boyfriend. Uh, so the siblings kidnap the boyfriend, and mm-hmm. when he goes to get him, they beat the shit out of Black Spider. Uh, he's just asking for, for his boyfriend, Daniel. Uh, just, he needs him back. And they basically say, we're well, going to do more jobs for us, uh, and if you don't, we're going to kill him. So, yeah, we see him, like, you know, tied up, chained up in, like, a, a crappy room, bloody nose, mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. So it just, it really sets up the motivation of, like, why he's going to want to help Penguin. He's yeah. he's probably got the most motivation out of any of the characters that have been introduced so far. In fact, it's almost interesting, because we don't really know how this conversation started, but yeah. it, it does almost frame it as if he came to Penguin wanting yeah. to help like he's not just being recruited he is actively looking to be on the opposing side because it felt like an interview at the beginning right it does yeah and, and then when you start going through it's like oh no this is not an interview at all um so you know because he yeah so he talks about how he used to be a, a, a an addict as well and he went through you know the program in the you know he, but you have to go through part of that is is you have to submit to a higher power and it doesn't have to be God or anything like that, just something bigger than yourself. Um, and so he says, and you say, I surrender to a higher power and his, and this is where, you know, King has a lot of fun with the cuss words where everything's bleeped, you know, and his bleeping name is Oswald, Oswald Cobblepot. And that sets the whole tone for the entire uh, rest of the issue. But as it gets going, you're like, Oh, this is not just a, an interview. This is him seeking penguin out. Whereas Penguin, the rest of the issues have been him seeking them. This guy let you know went to him, uh, and is seems to going to be an integral piece, right? Because he's closer to the siblings than anybody else has been. Yeah, basically because he's still actively working for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cobblepot describes him as the spy. He's got his team of mercenaries. He's got mm-hmm. his concierge, the help. Now he has a spy. Uh, admittedly, I, I, you do have to float the concept that maybe this guy is lying, that maybe this is actually an attempt Could- to, you know, fight against Penguin. But, I mean, I'm yeah. just, I'm throwing that out there as a possibility. I don't necessarily yeah. think that. I'm just, you know, it's always possible. But yeah. it does make it feel really big when you get that final page and you finally see mm-hmm. the other side of the room and you see Penguin with everyone that he's recruited behind yeah. him. And, uh, you know, that final panel of the city and be like, yeah, the city's not ready for us. Like, we, we know this is the Bat book, right? It's the Penguin. But uh, except for the first issue, we haven't had any Batman. So when Batman had showed up in this one, and it's such a shock, it, it almost feels like a slasher villain, right? It's almost like Jason suddenly there. Because even his reaction, he's like, ah, oh, this bleeping day, when he realizes that Batman's behind him. It was such a good moment. Yeah, there was some interesting thing. Just to go back to the idea of addiction, there was some interesting mm-hmm. stuff in here where the siblings, when they show him his boyfriend chained yeah. up, you know, he does acknowledge that he's effectively addicted to his boyfriend now, even if yeah. he's not addicted to a substance anymore. Right. Earlier on, he describes Batman as being an addict. He's addicted to fighting crime and saving mm-hmm. the city. We're all addicted to something, as he puts it. And yeah. it does sort of put into question that the overall theme of the book and the idea that Penguin... Like, he was away from his addiction, but him going back to take his city, is that him going back to, you know, his one true addiction, you know? Which is power, right? And so, so, you know, if if, if, if Black Spider's looking at him as, like, the higher power, right? Is Gotham, you know, Penguin's higher power, and if that's that's at the, the point of controlling him, makes him no different than Batman? Right, they're just on opposite sides of things, mm. you know, because because Batman wants to control Gotham as well, but in a different way than Cobblepot wants to, um, and so uh, yeah, and then you know how much different his kids are running things, right? They seem to be a little bit more brutal and efficient than Oswald was, where Oswald would kind of let people, you know, yeah, yeah, you owe me later. These guys are not having any of that. Like you messed up twice, that's one too many. You know, we're, we're taking things in our own hands. Oh, yeah. The, the sister starts beating them up with a stick, and mm-hmm. the panels all go red. The coloring, you know, makes a big deal of it. It's like, you know, she's, she's seeing red almost. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things is that all the interview pages where we're just looking at him across the table mm-hmm. telling the story, 
they're all just straight nine panel grids yeah and it really grounds those pages in like a really straightforward like you know like this is just someone sitting down telling the story but as mm-hmm. soon as you go into the actual flashbacks and the story he's telling the layouts are all very different you know they're just whatever fits for the scene they're all you know mm-hmm. some, some have angled panels some have just more uh segmented things yeah. some have whatever it, you know but the idea that every time you go back to him telling the story it's just these straight nine panel grids it really gives this sense of this is where he's just calmly telling the story but when we're in the story we get the panel layouts to kind of help tell what the, the the feeling of the emotion is and all that so mm-hmm. uh yeah, I I think it's a really well done issue. It feels a little bit different to the other ones because it yep. is from this slightly different perspective almost. Uh, I mean, the books always play with perspective. I mean, right from issue one, it was always... It's never Oswald's perspective. Yeah. It's always someone else. This might be the mm-hmm. first one where it's entirely been one person's perspective. Yeah. But, uh, so, but, it certainly, but it certainly set him apart from all the other characters that he's recruited. and. Mm-hmm feels like the final piece of the puzzle before we go go into the city. So, yeah. really He's got his crew. Also curious, too, that his daughter, that that's also very similar to Penguin's inciting incident when he has to go back and he beats up the tailor. You know, and then we, we learn the, the rule of thumb mm. uh, parable from, from him. So, uh, also very similar there. You know, that's King, you know, playing with, the, you know, don't forget, these are still Penguin's kids. You know, they, they got this from somewhere. But yeah, uh, that, that final page where you see the whole crew behind him, right? With the help, his ex-wife, the Force of July. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention his ex-wife, yeah. Yeah, because, well, that's his consigliere, right? That's his you know, advisor that he talks about there at the end with yeah. the spy. And, and yeah, all the that, helps, so. the muscle, and the, the team mm-hmm. of the goons, yes. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I was doing it from memory earlier, so I didn't remember yeah. the exact word. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is probably what the uh, this is probably considered the end of the first arc. I imagine the first mm-hmm. trade will end with this issue is the, the cliffhanger yeah. of now they're going to the city, uh, which makes perfect sense. But I, I yeah. think it's been a great first arc. I think all the issues have felt really stand out. I don't think mm-hmm. any of them have been as good as issue. I, issue one was like a masterclass mm-hmm. of an issue, yeah. but they've yeah. all been great to really solid and built up the the the, 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 the anticipation of like a. What is he actually going to do once he gets mm-hmm. out of the city and fights his kids? <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good because each of them have their own thing where they're kind of episodic, but they also stand alone, right? Because the second issue was was the help, him going through and pulling the help out of retirement, yeah, right? And that was that tag. And then the the third issue was was him assembling the Force of July uh, and trying to give them what they want or forcing them to go. And then the fourth was the getting his ex-wife in yeah. Vegas. You know, so each of them they feel very episodic. Um, yeah, I, it's it's fu- like yeah. If I was to sort of rank them, I'd, issue one is definitely the best of the mm-hmm. five. I'd maybe put issue four second. I think the wife yeah. issue was really good. The way that played out like yeah. a heist and like the mm-hmm. the build up to the payoff, yeah. and then after that maybe this issue. Yeah, this one was really strong because just the, the how I kept going back to the nine panel with him talking. It it really set a pace for it. You know. Yeah, and it made that final page where it turns to the other side of the room, and yep. it's not nine panels. It's it's a more cinematic thing where yep. it's the full reveal of the, the group, and then the mm-hmm. the wide screen panel of like Penguin's face saying, "All right, it's time to go to Gotham, boys." It yep. it felt like a big build up. Uh, like which... I hate I hate the Penguin, but I'm kind of rooting for him. After you know, like he's <laughs> Tom King's done it. He's made you care for that that low life, you know. Uh, but but yeah, it's some really solid stuff. I'm glad glad I decided to read this one. This is another Tom King, you know, victory lap, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh all right, what are you rating the penguin issue five? Uh this is an eight point five. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with that. Okay. <laughs> I have to I think about it. Higher. I thought you were, I thought you were gonna give it the nine. I was, I was, I was a little tempted, but yeah. I, I think you know, thinking about compared to the other issues that, that it's mm-hmm. had, if I'm ranking this one third, I think eight point five feels about right. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, issues two and four, like, like the help issue might be the weakest of the five, and that's saying something because it was still very, very good. Mm-hmm.